Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to All The Star Sailing Adventures. Today we are servicing the cooling system on a Sole Mini 33 marine diesel engine. Jump on board this week as we tackle servicing our cooling system on board our little sailing boat. Welcome back to All The Stars Sailing Adventures. Join us, Rachel and Jess, on our Cavalier 37 All The Stars as we live and learn about life on the water. Hit that subscribe button guys. Welcome back to All The Star Sailing Adventures. So why service the cooling system on your motor, you might ask? Good question. The main reason is to prevent the motor from overheating. Also, I have not serviced the cooling system on this engine before, so it's my first time. So I'll be learning as we go, but the principle of a marine engine cooling system is similar to the radiator you have in your car. In a car engine, you have air cooling the coolant of the motor which is pumped around the motor, cooling the engine itself. Whereas in a boat, basically you're just using the seawater to cool the coolant pumping around the engine rather than the air. The reason we're servicing the cooling system is that salt water that goes through the marine radiator, if you like, it's called a heat exchanger, is corrosive and it can create blockages in the cooling veins inside the heat exchanger. By opening up that system, cleaning out any uh, build-up deposits of calcium or uh, corrosion, we therefore make the cooling system much more efficient and preventing an overheating. I'm really excited about getting started. Let's get going and see what we discover. So here's our coolant that gets pumped around the engine block, goes through the heat exchanger, cools down, comes back through the engine block, pumped around. This is our raw water intake from a seacock. So sea strainer through to the raw water pump. That gets pumped through the heat exchanger, goes through those little capillaries that I was talking about. That's our heat exchanger. The water pump here pumps in the seawater, goes through that, the uh, cooling element and then comes out through there and goes over the top of our exhaust manifold and then gets pumped out through the back of the boat. So first thing I'm going to do is get this alternator out of the way because that's where we get access to our cooling element and there's also one at the back. So I've taken that starter motor out. Now I need to get to that inspection cover. But first, before I take the inspection cover off, I'm going to drain all the fluid bottom side of this heat exchanger. Wow, so I just drained the coolant out of the system and I had to catch it in um, containers. There was no smooth way to do it and I spilled a little bit over the side there. I'll, um, I'll just make sure that I, I give that a bit of a fresh water rinse off before the day's done and uh, that'll just flow down to the bilge and I'll be able to sponge that out. I'm going to remove this seawater intake pipe there's a little bit of water spill out of there. And uh, here we go. Got a bit of salt water draining out of that as we speak. I'm trying to catch that with that rag. I'm going to rinse all of this off with fresh. There's no full blockage, but it's definitely some scale build up there. So now I'm going to take the back inspection cover off and have a look at that one too. I'm noticing these aren't overly tight. With a spring washer and an o-ring set up uh, makes me think that I shouldn't over tighten these when I re replace them in because we could end up with too much compression of the o-ring I'm expecting to be a bit of water coming out of this so I've got my little container oh! <whistles> fair to say a bit of water came out of that alright see a fair bit of um a little bit of scale in there too, but um, those capillaries are not fully closed, so that's a good thing, but it's worthwhile to clean now. So that's the rear one, and look, there's a little bit of scale build up there, it's not too bad. This one is a little bit worse, just calcium growth. So I've marked them, this is the rear ones, marked that so that I know where it goes. 
Now I've just got to get that heat core out. But getting that out is going to be a bit tricky. I haven't done this before. And the motor's only done 600 hours, so it's not like it's done a huge amount of work, but obviously it's more of a time factor if it's had salt water sitting in here. So, in an effort to get that element out to clean it better, I'd found the only way I could sort of encourage it out was to use a the largest socket that I had to place on the end of that and gently tap that uh, forward because you don't want to be hitting it with a hammer on an uneven surface, you want a nice flat surface because it's um, it's quite sensitive, it's only made out of copper so it's coming forward which is good, I'm just going to keep tapping away and now I actually found I don't need to tap it anymore, I can just push this from behind gently pull and I'm going to have a problem here, I'm going to collide with the body of the engine yep that's where our problem is so in the end I had to take off the exhaust manifold from there to get the heat core out the back of the exchanger and it just made it past the fuel filter with a bit of persuasion so I've taken that out and given it a good clean just given this a, an acid wash along with the end caps all those cores look nice and clean And that's all dried out, I can put that back together, H. Yay! Yay! We've cleaned up these end caps, cleaned up the core, now it's time to put the new O-rings in. Two of these ready to go. I'm also going to spray a little bit of lanolin just around this flange edge before I fit that just to slow down any corrosion. Just a little note, as I'm tensioning these end caps, I've been working evenly and gradually from one end to the next. The reason I'm doing that is so that we don't distort the o-ring, because the o-ring has to sit on that flange. That's why if you ease them both in from both ends, we lessen the chance of that o-ring being pinched, which is what we don't want happening, because we really want those to do their job. Rach, have I told you before how much I love Cal? Those of you who don't know, Cal and Di were the previous owners of this boat. Here's another example where I'm particularly appreciative of the man. Um, in amongst all these engine spares, and, and there's not a single engine spare that we don't have really. Um, yesterday I had to pull the exhaust manifold off to get the heat core out. Uh, of course the old gasket just got destroyed and I thought okay, I'm going to probably have to order a new exhaust gasket when I pull that off knowing that we might not have an operating engine for a week or so. And, right at the bottom of all the spares, what do we have there, amongst other gaskets? Is that what a gasket looks like? We have an exhaust gasket. Yep, we have a spare, and I'll be ordering another spare, of course. Um, so I've just been cleaning up the exhaust manifold, um, getting rid of the old gasket. Yeah, so I've just been scraping that old gasket off. All the old gasket was quite well bonded onto the um, body of the, the exchanger. Yeah, I'd use a combination of Stanley blades, sharp knives, um, and a little small chisel to try and sort of scrape off the worst of it from a distance. It's just an awkward place to work, but um, I got it all off now and I've cleaned it all up and um, I'll use a bit of that gasket sealant that I've got here, some high temp gasket sealant. Um, Actually just did a quick bit of research on exhaust manifold gaskets and even though I've got this really good quality high temp gasket adhesive sealant, Considering this is a really good quality exhaust gasket and both surfaces are in really good nick They've cleaned up really really smooth and very very flat. I don't need to use the sealant um, Sealant would come into into play if there was a pitted surface uh, If there was damage to those surfaces because it would give you the added compression and closure of that joint Whereas this this is a lovely high temp gasket and it'll make removing the exhaust manifold in the future a lot easier if I don't use sealant. Once I've fitted this gasket, it's just going to pop on really lovely and easily there. And when I've fitted this manifold back on, I'm going to be using some Loctite thread locker just on the uh, on the threads on the studs because because it's going to be a lot of vibration and. Uh, and I don't need to use a corrosion inhibitor because it's stainless steel stud 
stainless steel bolt. So yeah, I'm just going to use a bit of this thread locker on there before I screw on those nuts. Flat washer and a spring washer. That'll hold that there. I'll be just tightening it gently on opposites so that we're going to need a nice even compression of that gasket. And across. Okay, so there she is. She's all reassembled. The only thing remaining to do now is to refill um, the system with fresh coolant. And um, yeah, then I'll be, I'll be giving the motor a test run, making sure I've got plenty of water pressure to prime the, um, the pump so that we get water into the system pretty much straight away through the heat exchanger. Squeeze the fluid up in there, but it's about five litres I've got to put in there, so it might take a little while. Just done an uh, engine test run, ran the motor at 2000 RPM under a bit of load, under pressure, so that I had some water pressure going through that um, exch heat exchanger, and um, there's no leaks, I'm happy to report. Yeah, quite happy with that result. Obviously for the next couple of weeks of operating I'll be just checking again to make sure there's no water leaks but there's definitely no obvious leaks here and we have a fully serviced um, heat exchanger on a Sole Mini 33 engine. So that's how we service our heat exchanger on board our boat All The Stars. Hope you found it useful. I'm going to include in the description below some other useful videos on servicing heat exchangers. For us it's time to go sailing. Get out there, it's a beautiful day. Stay tuned, thanks for watching. So join us next week, where you'll get to meet my new crew, Emma, some sprightly exciting sailing, remote anchorages, and the much anticipated return of the almost naked chef.